little bit when everybody else kicks this thing off this morning. Just for all people who are coming in. Let's all stand up and let's begin to worship the Father. Let's begin to welcome the Spirit of God here this morning. Just while you're finding your seats and coming on in. Let's go ahead and pray. Holy Spirit, we welcome you this morning. Spirit of God, come and speak. And do what you do best. God, our hearts are wide open for you. Spirit of God, come. We worship you and praise you this morning. In Jesus' name. Go ahead and sit down.
things around us. God, we take our eyes off of all that. And God, this morning we fix our eyes upon you. The Bible says that God, you are the author and the finisher of our faith. So God, we fix our eyes upon you. We gaze upon you, oh God. Upon you that we be this morning with the eyes of your heart.
we're here before you this morning. We open our hearts, open wide. Open our minds, open wide. Father, we avail ourselves, we give ourselves to you. Body, soul, and spirit. This morning, here's your people. People interested in you. Spirit of God, I think that you come right now. You begin to speak. Spirit of God, begin to speak. You know, the, where in the Bible it says that the, the power of God, the power of God in a room, it breaks different chains, different thoughts, different bondage, captivity kind of things around our minds, around our hearts, even physically. The Bible says that when the power of God comes into a room, those things, they begin to break. They begin to break in the face of God, in the presence of God. God, do that right here, right now, in Jesus' name. Different ones that have been tormented by oppression or depression or disease. Even different addictions. Even different lies that we believe. Even about God or about other people. Father, I thank you that there's freedom in this place this morning. Because of the power of the presence of God. Thank you. 
Glory to God. How are you all doing this morning? Glad to be in God's house, I hope. Thanks for being here, everybody. Welcome. Uh, this is a place where we're creating together a church for life-changing God encounters. We believe this is a place where you can come be with God. And so if that's what you want to do this morning, like we want it. Let's God you're in the right place. Hallelujah. Thank you for coming. Praise God. I want to draw your attention to a couple of different um, different things that are happening uh, throughout the week. You coming right up here just by way of reminder. If you want to grab one of our brochures on your way out, or maybe you've got one on your way in, I don't know. But that has all the information in there that you need to contact us or get a hold of us um, for you know, any of the details or information that's happening. We have different midweek meetings. And uh, you know, of this week, worthy of note in particular, we have some very special prayer meetings happening this week. Give me a show of hands if you are, like we are as a whole church, um, setting something aside for the sake of spiritual gain. We've been talking about that over the last few Sundays. If you're visiting, just put your hand up anyways, it's okay. All right, so if you're fasting, if you're praying and fasting, a bunch of you are, thank you for participating. We're starting to hear different things that God's saying and speaking, and so thank you for joining us in that spiritual journey of the church. It's powerful. We are wrapping that up. If you want to be a, if you want to catch up the tail end of that, we've got one more week to go before we party next Sunday. We'll tell you about that in a moment. Um, but during the week here, if you want to participate in any way in prayer and fasting, and maybe this is a little bit new for you as, a, as a, someone that follows God, or you just want to like kickstart you know, part of your relationship with God, your prayer life, or you know, a great way to do it is to set something aside for the sake of spiritual gain. It's called fasting. And we've been challenging each other to do that. You know, whether it's like TV for a week, you know, or you know, I'm gonna take three days and I'm only gonna have juice, well, you know, water juice, and that's kind of a tough one, you know. Pray for fasting, even some entertainment. Something pleasurable, something in your diet. You know, our, our whole family all this month has been off sugar. You know, this is a good thing to do right after New Year's. And there's been some cranky days, let me tell you. <laughs> right. But uh, praise God, we've been, uh, we've been you know, challenging each other to do this. And I believe that God, if you want in on that, then, um, you know, just kind of sign yourself up. It's a spiritual thing, right? Sign yourself up. Say, God, this week I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fast lunches. I'm going to take my lunch break. And I'm going to go for a walk. And I'm going to spend some time with God. Or whatever it might be for you, just allow, you know, just walk with God in it. And we'll give you more ideas after if you want. We've got one more week to go. And, uh, you know, it's all going to come late next Sunday. But before we get to next Sunday, we're going to break our fast again. Before we get there, we've got special prayer meetings. Uh, this Thursday night, we always pray every Thursday night. But this Thursday night, man, are we ever going to pray this Thursday night, Friday night, and Saturday night, okay, so three nights of prayer, not all night, don't, that's okay, 7 to uh, 8, 30, 9 o'clock, whenever God lets us go home, 7, 30, or 7 o'clock until 8, 30, uh, we're going to be praying in different homes, let me tell you what they are, you'll get all this information on email and text as well during the week, you can sign up um, to our info communications, um, Thursday, it's going to be mine and Mary's house, and we have our prayer meeting there every Thursday. On um, Friday, let's hear it for Tolu and Sade. They said we could use their home on this Friday, and so that's going to happen. We're going to be, thanks guys for that hospitality. And then on Saturday, it's going to be at Ayuk and Shirley's home, and so it's going to be great. Just going to these different homes and praying like crazy for what God's going to do this year and what he is doing. So praise God. So you're welcome to come. Please come. Please circle all three of those nights. Come one of those nights. Come one of those nights for five minutes and then leave. You know, whatever you need to do, let's pack those meetings out and let's have a good time before God as we end our 21 days of praying and fasting. So next Sunday is the 24th. We're all going to come together uh, and have a great, uh, great service. I believe in God for some spiritual things to happen in there. So come ready. Come spiritually primed. Come ready for what God wants to do. We're going to take communion together in the service. And that's officially for some of us that have been like fasting, you know, solid foods, that's going to be like when that's over right there when we take communion. What a great way to break the fast. Isn't that what it meant? Breakfast in church. And uh, that will only whet your appetite for what we're going to be doing afterwards, which is to share a whole bunch of foods, healthy foods, that we're going to share afterwards. Um, just stick around for, you know, like half an hour after the service and let's just fellowship together and rejoice in what God's been saying and what he wants to do. So that's next Sunday right after the service. If you can be a part of that, um, we would love it if you would bring something to that, and you can see a sign-up form for that. It'll be right at that back table in the foyer um, afterwards. And uh, also, if you would just see Anya. Anya at the back. Can you wave? Look at that. She's holding that orange form. So we all want you to sign with different things that, um, that you can bring. So that's going to be next Sunday. And uh, church, you know, with it, you know, I don't know how hooked up you feel with what folks are going on with these um, praying and fasting, but I believe this week it's going to wrap some things up in the Spirit, and it's going to chart the course ahead. I mean, you know God's gift, that you can look ahead and you can believe that God is able. Amen? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
All right, another really quick announcement. There is a very important vote coming up for anybody here that is a member of this community um, center. A very important vote coming up, and you can see Merrick the details. That might be one or two or three of you. You can see Merrick the details uh, about that uh, just after the service. Just kind of pick your brain about what's going on. But a very important vote. There's some people. There's some shifting of power and the president and so forth who runs this place. And we're just believing God for continued um, favor here and for what God wants to do. So make sure that you're a part of that. Um, also, if you're not, you know, you wish you were a member here. You know, you can buy a membership. It won't be in time for the vote. But um, more importantly, you can pray, right, that what God wants done here. Um, is going to keep on happening. You know, this is a secular facility, right? It's not a religious facility. It's not a, you know, it's, it's, it's all kinds of other things during the week to all kinds of other groups, you know, in this community, blessing this community. But you know what we say this, that when something touches the kingdom of God, church gets blessed. Isn't that right? Whether there's a prayer meeting in here or a church meeting in here, wherever it might be, if it touches the kingdom, it's blessed. Amen? It's full of favor. And so we're just believing God um, for his will to come to pass in this place. Amen. Well, before we dis dismiss the kids this morning, um, we've got something that we want to do, and I want to call up um, two couples that we've come to know and love very much. And if there's Kleenex beside you, you might want to grab some because you might not like what you're about to hear. But I'm going to have um, Heather and Kevin, you guys can come on up. Uh, we had Kleenex, that would be great. And uh, can I get you guys to come and stand with us as well? So every so often in the journey of uh, creating a church together, um, God kind of throws some curveballs or there's some surprises. Uh, you, you know as well as I do that when you're creating a church, it's a very personal thing. When you go to a church and you help with a church, it's a very personal thing. And uh, the relationships get to be very, very personal. And uh, sometimes along the journey, um, God's creates some changes and some, has some direction and some mindset of his own. And so when people come to Mary and I and, and uh and they say, you know what, we're just really feeling that uh, maybe another church is uh, is kind of in the works for us, that it's been great being here, we love you guys, but you know, there's somewhere that we're feeling that God wants us to go differently for church, because how many of you know there's a lot of great churches in the city, isn't that right? Um, you know, when, when uh, people come to us and say that, what we want to do as a church body and as, and as pastors is release them to go and do what they feel that they're called to do, isn't that right? Um, both these guys have come and talked to us months ago about different changes that they felt um, kind of stirring in their heart and different desires and different needs. And you know what? This isn't really to have them up here to have them explain why, you know? This is up there to say, you know what? They love us and we love them and we want to pray over what God is doing in their lives and just release them with blessing, you know, for whatever God has for them next. Everybody in agreement with that and understand that? That's why we do it. Rather than just kind of like, what happened to those people that used to come? You know, what happened to our dear friends that used to come? You know, instead of, instead of that, we want to just bless these guys right up front and just say, you know what? Where God's taking you, where he's leading you, um, be blessed in that. And if you want the inner scoop on it, you can talk to them after. Isn't that right? I mean, we've all got each other's names and numbers, so... Praise God. And so that's what being a church is about, right? No matter what happens, no matter the changes that come, is that, um, is that God's in it and we, and we and he favors us and blesses us in it. Amen? And so I'm going to have them both um, just kind of share just a few words because um, uh, you know they're never going to have this mic again, right? So I'm going to have them share a few words. And uh, please, after the service, lots, lots of hugs, lots of prayers, and lots of blessings on both of these couples as they, as they go their simple ways. Right, do you want to say anything on that before they Maybe at the end? Okay. All right, so, I think Kevin, you guys can share a few words. So, we've been coming since the second week that we've met in a whole group. So, so, this is a huge change for us and not something that we've taken lightly at all. Um, we just want to say so much, and we've already talked to Lord and Merit, just thank you both so much for all the ways that you've touched our lives. I don't know if you do this. This is before Gateway even started, but Rowan and Vera were a big part of our wedding. They did premarital counseling for us, and then Rowan was the officiator. So that was a huge moment in our lives, and potentially, you know, the biggest one until Hudson, and uh, they were there for that as well. And so we really appreciated um, the big moments that they've been there for, but also for the little moments. And so we. <laughs> um, we've learned <laughs> we've learned so much from these two and from uh, all the people at Gateway. We've made some ton, some great relationships and we hope that those will continue um, even when we're not here. But we just wanted to say thank you so much. We love you guys so much. Um, and we've really, really enjoyed our time at Gateway and um, we are excited about this next chapter, but we will definitely um, miss you guys and 
Hope to come back and visit, but. That's really cool, thanks for sharing that. You know, Mary and I actually married um, this wonderful couple over here as well, wow. which just makes me think. I just, I don't, I don't know if marriages are valid after you leave. <laughs> Maybe we can pull that card, can we pull that card? <laughs> Let me know if you can share a couple thoughts, just kind of what's on your heart this morning. Well, I, we probably feel the same as Heather and Brian do. We've thought about this for a long time, and uh, it's had nothing to do with the body here or with Rowan or Mara. We love Rowan and Mara with all our hearts and have received so much from them. But we live in Strathmore, and it's just a long distance. We're coming every Sunday in here. But then, you know, through the week, to come into a, a um, home group, which is really, really good, I tell you, at Dave and Anna's. Nice plug. If, if you're not going, you should go because it's a wonderful place to, to get to know one another and they're very hospitable. And then the prayer group, we love the intercessory prayer at Rowan and Mara, but it, it's just too far to go. So we uh, we decided to be in Strathmore and we found a little church, full gospel church, the leading church. And right now that's what we're going to do. I don't know if you do that. <laughs> <laughs> when you sit and look around at everybody and all these babies that are coming up, it's yeah. so, so encouraging, so exciting. But uh, that's the only reason we're leaving is because of the distance, that's all. Certainly not because of the the fellowship and the ministry the messages that we get here. Yeah, I just like to say that there's nothing in a Sunday that uh, <clears throat> I haven't uh, got a good message, and that uh, we'd be able to, that we'd be able to, if we are in town, we definitely be stopping in into that prayer group or at uh, whatever if we're in town. And so I thank you so much, Pastor John and Pastor Mary. Thank you guys. We just want to honor these guys for leading the right way. It was the right way to lead the church. And they've done it the right way. And so we just want to thank them. They came to us early. They came and said, you know, what do you think? And we all shared. And we're not like, we're leaving. And we're mad. And we're out of here. And see you on the sign. Or, or we've already made our decision. There's nothing we can say that's going to change our mind. Bye. And it wasn't that. It was, it was us. It was the working it out together. So we just really appreciated that. And we love you guys so much. You guys have been such a huge part of this church. And you know, when Ron and I started this church, we said to each other, this will be a gateway. And that's, that was one of the reasons why we showed them this word, that no matter how long people come here for, that they will be moved and ushered into something new and ushered into more of God and more of his presence and more of his plan for for them. Okay, and Kevin, they weren't even really going to a church before they came to us, right? And so this has been a huge a huge experience for them, and now they're going forth. Right? We, want to, we want to go from glory to glory to glory. That's what God moves us from, and that's what we're releasing in the message today. So. Thanks, you guys. Thanks for sharing. Why don't we, um, why don't we say just a little quick word of prayer, you know, just right here in the setting um, over both of these couples. Uh, if you're comfortable with that, you can kind of like stretch your hands up towards them. That's kind of what we do, kind of know as a way to say, God, that person right there, that couple right there. Let's start with you, right? Well, we ready to do that. So we go ahead. I've already mentioned this to you, but um, my prayer for you is that, that there is a home. That when you walk in, it will be a home. And that is the place where your gifts will be used in the very best way. And for many more, I have such a heart for what you guys have a heart for, and that is seniors. And I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that God will lead you, lead you to so many unsaved seniors. That, that you will be able to lead them to the Lord, that you will be a huge blessing in your life, that they will come to you and go. You'll be surprised at how many of them come to you because you live right among them there. The Lord will bring them supernaturally, the hungry hearts that you have been to get saved. They will come to you in Jesus' name. Thank you for sharing that story. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name. Over this couple, Father, we just need you, God, for great things. Moving forward, God, for great things in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you that you've got um, you've got the path set out for them and what that looks like, God, for, for church.
church for involvement there in the kingdom and your purposes and what you're doing. God, I thank you that you make it plain, that you make it clear. That God, this, this thing that they're stepping out on, to say that we know and we're stepping out and, and we feel like we're supposed to do this, that God, you would meet them there. Father, we pray a blessing and we speak release over them uh, as a couple. Father, thank you that you keep relationships in the past. And Father, thank you that um, uh, you compel them to come and visit in Jesus' name. <laughs> and God, we just thank you that, um, that in the kingdom, uh, it's all good. In Jesus' name, Father, thank you for it. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. You're going to bless going in, coming in, and then bless yes, going out. So we release blessing over them and over their lives, over their husbands, <coughs> over their family, yes. over their walk with you in Jesus' name. Father, just with um, outstretched faith and you know, and, and outstretching our hands towards them right now. Father, we thank you um, for the sign of your spirit upon them. Father, for the warmth of your spirit. Father, for the, the, the warmthness and the invitation what you're leading them into. Father, some changes aren't easy. And but Father, this thing that they feel from you, Father, I thank you that you take it, that you begin to build on it, that you grow it, that the momentum um, builds. And that, Father, within just weeks and months from now, the Father, they would look back and they would say, you know what, that was hard, but that was right. You know, look at what God's doing. Father, I thank you for the evidence of what you want to do in them and through them. Father, we believe you for that. Father, we bless them um, on this journey. And, Father, thank you so much for the support and the pillars. Um, just, you know, even for Mara and I, you know, for the, the support that's been in this friendship that doesn't have to end and can continue. Same with many of us. Father, thank you that doesn't have to end. But Father, that the journey in the spirit of where you want them in church, in your kingdom, and the things that have been prophesied and spoken over them, for where it goes from here. Father, we thank you for blessing and favor and release on it. Father, we release these guys uh, to your purposes and your plan. In Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you that the path of the righteous shines brighter right. and brighter until the full right. rain. So let them run and fire over you that you're here. There's no way that you're done yet. That your, your ministry here is taking a turn and will shine brighter and brighter until the full day, until the fullness of that kind of path in Jesus' name. So we just declare that over you that there's more, there's a, there's a, there's something yet to fulfill in Jesus' name, there's a purpose that yet you have to walk into and fulfill. And when you get there, it will feel right. It will feel like the heavens are opening up over you, that the light of the full day is shining upon you. Yes, thank you, Jesus, that your face shines upon you. Your countenance, and you smile, and you dance over them, and you sing over them with songs of deliverance in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Bless you guys. God, thank you everybody for your patience with that. While we're at it, anybody else? Anybody else? <laughs> we're going to uh, dismiss the kids. Kids, why don't you come on up? Thank you for being patient. We can make it into an altar call. I thought, you know, why not? You know? Praise God. Come on, kids. All right.
as they start learning this past season because they've all been great students and they've learned it really well. All right. Everybody say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For your plans you. today. For your plans today. For my head. For my head. For my heart. For my heart. For my hands. For my hands. And for my feet. For my feet. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's follow Mr. Gale. Something we do as a church family. If you need an envelope for that, put up your hand and we will get you one. We need a couple envelopes out here, guys. Thank you very much. Just keep your hand up or semi up just so that we can see who needs one. Thank you for your faithfulness and giving, everybody. We've been asking God, you know, uh, just around you know, the beginning of the year here in January about financial reset in our lives. You know, brand new year, uh, January 2017. Just as surely as 2016 comes, uh, has come, so is 2017. Where are we going to be financially at that time? We've been asking God just for a reset in our finances and some of our thinking when it comes, uh, when it pertains to money. Taking this juncture of the new year to be able to do that. And in Deuteronomy chapter 28, we've been looking at this fantastic covenant, uh, this promise of blessing that comes from God. And if you walk with God any, uh, any length of time, you know that God wants to start meddling with some things that are pretty personal in our lives. Isn't that right? I mean, in relationships, and the way that we think, and the way that, you know, our heart, and also with our money. Not to get something from us, but to get something to us and through us. I mean, that's why God wants to be involved in our finances and to hit reset on that. And just to say, God, a brand new year, a blank slate, God, come and do what you want to do. Let's get our thinking around what he wants to do. Let's get our thinking straight around that. And in Deuteronomy 28, uh, we can see it in living color there. I'm not going to take the time to read it all, but it's the covenant promise that you and I have with God. And it says, Now it shall come to pass if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God, and to carefully obey all his commands, which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. Watch this now. This is his blessing upon you and upon you. It says, all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you, because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the country. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body, and the produce of your ground, and the increase of your herds, and the increase of your cattle, and the offspring of your flocks. Blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. Blessed shall you be when you come in, and blessed shall you be when you go out. And it goes on, and it just brings us just defines and outlines the blessing that God wants for us. And church, if you're following God, if you're, if you're a believer in Jesus this morning, this promise applies to you. And uh, you can make a mental note of this or write this down somewhere or flip in your Bibles to Galatians 3, verse 29. I'm going to show you how that covenant right there, Galatians chapter 3, <coughs> applies to you and applies to me. Just while you're uh, making out your checks and preparing your offering there. Always good by way of reminder to hear what God says about our money and about our giving. Your Bible should open up to two, two places lately. Deuteronomy 28 and then fall open to Galatians chapter 3, verse 29. Just those two pages right there. She's just like, because one goes with the other. Okay, watch this. The same way that God made that covenant right there. Galatians 3, 29, it says, If you are Christ, say, that's me. Say that. Say, that's me. Well, that's, sure people. that's okay, we can make you sure. And if you are Christ, it says this, that you are Abraham's seed. In other words, you are from him. And heirs according to the promise. Heirs according to the promise. That promise, you can read it. That's what he's talking about. It's the promise that God gave to Abraham to bless him and to make him great. To bless him, to be a blessing. That's the promise that God made uh, to Abraham. And so, if we are in Christ... That's us. We believe in Christ. We are in Christ. We become children of God. It says we are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. That means the blessing that flowed to Abraham, and you can read all about it in the Old Testament, the blessing that flowed to God's people when they were following God and doing what he wanted is the same blessing that you and I can expect 
and can receive and can go before God here today and say over our finances, over 2016, what happens to us in 2016 financially as a church and as individuals, as families, as businesses, God, we're coming before you and we're saying we're blessed coming in and we're blessed going out. According to the promise of Abraham, Abraham, blessing the city, blessing the country, blessing and increase. Do you believe that this is what Jesus has for you? Yeah. It's right there in the Bible. So we align with that this morning. So let's go ahead and pray over our money, whether we're giving this morning or not. It, it uh, doesn't uh, prohibit you from praying about your money. So let's go ahead and pray over our finances this morning. God, over all of our bank accounts, over our money, over our budgets, over the over the, the over our spending, over our habits financially. God, this whole financial arena. God, I thank you that you are so uh, uh, extremely interested in it uh, for each of us. Father, to get something to us and through us, not to take anything from us. And so, Father, as we're here this morning holding that area of our lives out to you, as we're here this morning giving, Father, many of us giving, just continually and consistently giving uh, to your kingdom and your work here. Father, we come before you to say that we want to align with your word in this new year. It says that we are blessed with believing Abraham. That God, the blessing that you have for us, it is upon us. The blessing that we see on your people in times of old, on the, on, on, on the, on the family of Abraham, that Father, that blessing, that same blessing is in on, in on us as well. Father, we thank you for that. Father, we align with that. That blessing right there. Father, we thank you for it. Father, we receive it this morning in a brand new way. God, increase our faith in Jesus' name. Everybody said, Amen. Amen. Get to pray over your finances. Amen. Doesn't matter what the economy does. Doesn't matter what the dollar does. Doesn't matter what the uh, oil price of oil does. Isn't that right? Come on now. Because you're in oil country. Our faith isn't in that anyways, is it? Our faith is in God. Amen. Amen. Talking with a bunch of guys this week who were like, you know what, it's happening. The, the more depressed King, yeah, King of Dollars, the more depressed the price of oil goes, whatever, it's time to buy it. Isn't it? It's time to buy some stuff. You know, it's time to buy and wait. Isn't that right? <laughs> you can say your pastor said it. Maybe you don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise your name. Well, in the time that I have remaining, which isn't much. Um, I want to continue in this. Um, I want to continue in this series that we've been talking about, about the things or what I've challenged you all for, just to kind of catch some of you up. You haven't been um, here or here but not here, if you know what I mean. Just to catch some of us up. Um, we've been asking God, you know, we're trying to outline, trying to define in our lives the one thing that God would have us change this year. You know, you, we're here right at the beginning of a brand new year, looking out over the months that are going to come, you know, because spring is going to come. You know, uh, you know, looking out over the months that are coming, the spring and the summer and the fall, and then, you know, looking out over this year, of all the things that you could define or kind of outline in your life, and you could say, you know what, um, you know, I want this to change, and I wish this would change, and I hope that, you know, I hope there's something different there this year or this summer, and, you know, I want to end this next year uh, differently than the way I ended the last one. You know, whatever it might be, you know, all the things that could change. What we've been asking, uh, challenging each other to do and asking God about, you know, is what is one thing that must change? You know, if you could kind of push all the other stuff aside and say, but this one thing, must change. We want this to change. I want this to change in my life. There's tremendous clarity from doing that. Rather than running headlong into the year, ah, all these things I wish and I hope and I pray and just kind of like whatever happens, happens. You can get tremendous clarity by pulling off the page the one thing and saying this is something that I really want to turn a corner in this year. Or this is something about myself that this year I'm gonna I'm gonna beat it or I'm gonna do it or I'm gonna make it happen or or God this is my one prayer because maybe it's something that's out of your control and you're saying God I'm gonna come before you with this one thing. There's a lot of clarity that you and I get by doing that and by writing it down and by telling somebody and saying you know what I'm stepping out on a limb here but I believe that this can change and you step out on a limb and you say you know what you know to a spouse or to a good friend or to a boss and you say this is the year that I want to shift this that I want to change this that I want I want to do this. And, I'm not going to ask for a show of hands, but many of us have been doing that. Just kind of, you know, what would that one thing be for me? Is it a health thing? Is it a financial thing? Maybe is it a, 
Is it a relationship thing that our marriage is just kind of like, you know, free willing, but I want to go somewhere. I want to go somewhere good. Or, or is it, you know, like in previous, previous years I've had it that I want to spend more time with my kids this year than I did last year. You know, just demonstratively in the course of my week, I want this to change while they're young instead of fooling myself that, you know, when they're teens or adults and I'll have all this time for them. No, let's do it now. You know, but what is the one thing for you this year that could change? Pull that off the page and circle it and say, this is it. This is my commitment. And then for us to go before God during this time of prayer and fasting and setting time aside, and like I said, the time's not done yet. We've got another week to jump in on this kind of corporate group push towards this, you know, to bring that thing before God and to say, God, I want your perspective on this. I want you to change. Here's what we've been saying. I want you to change my thinking about this one thing, my speaking about this one thing, and my actions regarding this one thing. Because how many of you know, if God can meddle with our thinking, we've been given information to do that a little bit, and my speaking, like what comes out of my mouth, like what I'm thinking, and what I'm saying, and then what I'm actually doing, boots on the ground, if, if God can come and meddle somehow in that on a greater way than he ever has before, then man, that shifts something, isn't that right? I mean, that changes something. Many of us have been down the road of setting goals, you know, like at an anniversary or a birthday or at the beginning of the year, and resolution, and, you know, and, but a lot of times they can fall short of the change that we want for them because they're not a deep enough change. We haven't wrestled with how do I think about that? And how am I speaking about that? And what are my actions that are flowing from that? I mean, those are all great questions, great questions to ask. As I was praying about this message this morning and just kind of furthering those details on a little bit, we talked last week about our thinking, about how we think about God primarily in our prayer life, the thoughts that we have about God and what he wants for us and, and, and who he is to us. We talked a little bit about that last week. I want to talk a little bit about our speaking and our acting this week just as we kind of draw this series to a close. But before I jump into that, I really felt that I was supposed to push a little bit harder and I felt like the Spirit of God was saying for one, two, five, half a dozen, a dozen of us, all of us, but wait a second. I want you to hear it in church first. I felt this from God. That he wants us to hear it in church first. That there's something that needs to change in our life. That there's one thing. That if you were to stand before God, it's there for you. Something that's on the top of God's priority list for you to change. And I, and I felt like, and I know I've been, I'm kind of like, like beating this thing, you know, but I felt like God wanted me to push a little bit harder and say, no, wake up. There is one thing. You know, I've had God tell me to wake up before. I'm like, I am awake. No, wake up. I am awake. No, that, that there was, a, there was a, an impression from God for us this morning that there's a waking up to something. That there is something significant in your life and you know, maybe only you know, or maybe you and your spouse know or a good friend know, but most people don't know, that needs to change. And I felt like I was saying you heard it in church first. And so for, for a, a pulling off of the veil of some things in our thinking, listen, listen, we can get, this is human nature, we get so caught up in the day-to-day, -day, the routines, and the justifications that we make to ourselves for the things that we do. We can get so caught up in those things that we can go for years down a path that God would say, I have never intended for you to go down. Are you here this morning? But the moment that you and I say, God, that's not my heart. God, I don't want to do that. I turn from that. It's that Bible word repentance, right? I turn from that. I want to go this way instead. The moment we do that, the Bible says that, that he doesn't hold anything against us. His forgiveness is full and complete even while we're in it. So it's not an issue of forgiveness. But right there and then, he sets our feet back on the path that he has for us. And I just felt to say it like this, that this moment, that this time, perhaps for you this week with these special meetings and, and this culminating next Sunday, that this month, could be this whole kind of like cataclysmic turn for you in that one thing, in that area. That, that you actually turn from something that is not going to take you where you know you know it. But you turn into a direction that God wants you to go. I felt like him saying this, and this question has come to me a couple of different ways, but I felt him, felt him saying this. What are you pretending not to know about this? That's meddling, isn't it? What are you pretending 
not to know. So what is it for you? What have you justified? What have you just gotten so used to that you are hiding and pretending not to know that that habit will destroy you, that that health direction is going to kill you before you're supposed to go, that that vice is going to catch up with you? This is heavier than we usually get, isn't it? Praise God. Is it okay? Is it okay? I just felt like God saying, push it a little bit harder. That to, to issue out the call for us to wake up to some things. What are we pretending not to know? Because if that's significant enough for you, for me, that's going to be the one thing that we look to God as. We say, yeah, no, that's got to change this year. Amen. I want to further this by, uh, by talking about our speaking. We talked about our thinking. How you think about something will basically determine what you're going to end up speaking, and how you're going to end up acting. So we've talked about our thinking, particularly in terms of how we approach God. And, and this morning, I want us to talk about our speaking, the things that come out of our mouths. And I'm going to take you to a couple of uh, very interesting scriptures. And the first one is in Proverbs chapter 18. Can you go there with me? If you open your Bible straight up in the middle, I'm just going to flip it open. It's going to go to Psalms or maybe Proverbs or somewhere in there. But I want you to look up um, Proverbs chapter 18. The verse that is underlined and highlighted and penned over and arrow pointing to it and starred and a little heart in my Bible is uh, verse 22. He who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. But it has nothing to do with my message. So let's go to verse 21. <laughs> This is Bible, all right? This is scripture. This is God's word for you, for me. Here's what it says. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruit. This scripture and numerous others here in the book of James speaks this resounding truth out. You know, Jesus said, out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks. And we always look at it in Proverbs, look at it many times in Proverbs chapter 4 where it says, guard your heart with all diligence for out of it flow the issues of your life. Much of that is happening through what you and I speak, through what you and I say. And here the scripture says that death and life, I mean, I don't know how much I believe this. <laughs> Have you ever heard a pastor read a scripture and say that? I don't know how much I believe this and neither do you. You know that your death premature or whenever that happens in your life, how good that is and the quality of it and the, the ability that you have in it to be able to give to other people, that your life, that death and life are in the power. I mean, we would say a lot of different things right there. Wouldn't we? I mean, it's easy to feel, you know what, that's kind of like in the power of my boss, you know, or the power of my spouse or the power of the way that my kids are or the power of my finances. Right? Or the power of, I mean, we would think or we would guess that that power is in a lot of other people's hands. You know, like in Canada, the power of death could be in the doctor's hands. Anyway, but in, you know, the power of life and the power of death. We would say it belongs, that power belongs in a lot of other places, you know. But here's what the scripture says. You know what? You're basically dictating it. You're basically charting the course and speaking it right, as you go. That the reality, much of the reality that you have around you today is a result of the things that you've spoken and have been spoken over you. The speaking that's happened behind you has brought you to this place that you're at today. Mm -hmm. I think that's quite a phenomenal thought, isn't it? I mean, as you're speaking and other people speaking and your parents speaking and all that speaking. But by and large, the reality is that what you and I, the future that we're creating, we're creating a lot of that with what's coming out of our mouths which is really what the function of how we're thinking and what's in our hearts. And we're speaking out death or life. In the book of James, and you can check that out later, it's a short little book, and so you can just kind of like flip through it, but it talks about um, how out of the same <coughs> fountain should not come blessing and cursing. But it does, doesn't it? Through our mouths, I mean, we can bless or we can curse through our mouths, right? And, and, and the, the, the scriptural mandate, if you take all of these verses together and say, so what, 
we should put a guard and listen very carefully to the words that come, to the things that we speak. You know, Jesus in the Bible, and you can see this in, in uh, one of the accounts of his life in the book of John, Jesus is called the Word. Hey, get it. Some of you are like, where is he going with that? Jesus is called the Word. Why? Because he was the spoken word of the Father, made into flesh to walk among us. Think about that. That's a big thought. That through all the speaking of that God did, that the Father did, and of all the prophets that spoke out that there is one to come, and we've looked at many of those scriptures, that this was the word that was being laid out, the foundation that was being laid out for Jesus to come, to be made manifest. That's why Jesus is called the word. Because when God speaks, stuff happens. How many of you know that? In the book of Genesis, you know the account of creation. And God said, let there be light. There was a big bang and evolution and stuff, right? No. <laughs> However you unpack that in your scientific, theological, uh, Jesus, such a brain is fine. But when God speaks something, stuff happens. Isn't that right? And God put that same ability, listen, God put that same ability in you and in me, in the redeemed saints of God, to be able to speak out the word of God and to see things shift and to see things change. I want you to go to Romans chapter 4. We're going to jump right into a, a fairly complex um, statement that the Apostle Paul is making, or the writer of this book. A lot of times kind of a run on sentence, but I want us to, we're going to finish down on the punchline, on the punch of what, of what God's saying. In verse 16 of Romans chapter 4, you can check this out later or follow along with me. It says, Therefore, it is a faith that might be according to grace, so that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not only to those who are of the law, but to those who are of the faith. Of Abraham. That's where you and I come in, right? We're of the faith of Abraham. In other words, we believed God and it was credited to us as righteousness. We believe Jesus, and the Bible says that's all we need to do. We don't have to live up to some law. So it's talking about talking about us. And in verse 17, you script the parentheses there. It says, In the presence of him whom he believed, God, who calls life to the dead and called those things which do not exist as though they did. Who in contrary to hope, in hope, believe, so that he became the father of many nations, according to what was spoken, so shall your descendants be. All right? There's the punchline right there. I got over read. Verse 17, right at the end, that we call, we, like God, like Abraham, get to call those things which do not exist as though they do. This is, this is, a, this is a force and an ability that God has given us to be able to stand and to speak and to declare something. To speak not whatever you want, but to speak the word of God over a situation and circumstances and to see it shift and to see it change. God has given us that, that ability. And it works by us finding out what the will of God is for us and beginning to speak. Now when we wrestled last week with, with our thinking and some of the changes that, that need to happen, our thinking. We talked about our thinking when it comes to our approach to God. How many of you remember that? The God is, is never... Judging us. There's no condemnation in God. Remember we talked about that? That God is looking out at us like his kids. Right? And that his spirit is in us. And, and, and we can approach him as his kids. Right? And we talked about that. Our thinking towards God. About how some, some of the changes there. I hope that, I hope that you rest on some of the changes on that. Uh, I know I've been thinking a lot about it. When we're speaking. In our speaking. I want us to think about how we speak to God. In prayer, if you would call it prayer when you speak to God. Oh, God, help! <laughs> you, know, you would call that prayer, you know, when you're driving or, you know, something's going on and you say, Lord, have mercy. You know, well, I don't know if you call that prayer, if you call that swearing, I'm not sure. But if you, you know, like when your heart opens up to God and you want something and you communicate with God, call it prayer, call it calling out, call it whatever you want. In our speaking to God, let's look for a moment at how we speak and what we say. And what comes out of our mouth? Because I believe that the Bible teaches, and we don't have time to go into all these scriptures this morning, but I believe the Bible teaches that when we go to God 
instead of going to God about our problem, that we should go to God with what he said about our problem. In other words, to know this book enough, to know enough verses, which would be one or two or three, when you're starting out, to know some of what the will of God is, so that when you're talking to God, you can speak what he already promised about what it is that you're going to him about. Isn't that right? If we don't do it like this, you know, we could take 20 minutes or 10 minutes and get up early in the morning. I'm just going to do this. and make my coffee. I'm going to pray. We could spend those 10 minutes. Listen, I don't know if it sounds like this to him. Why do you complain? <laughs> Isn't that right? Oh, God. I'm here this morning because problem A. And we outline it. And then there's this person at work. That situation there, you know. Some of you do the shortcut to prayer. I know this about you. You're kind of like, you know what, God, you know everything, right? And God's like, yeah. And he's like, well, then. Can you fix it, please? And then you move on, right? Move on with your day. I mean, that's, that's it right there. It sews it right up. But God wants us to come to him and to stand before him persistently on the basis of what he said about our problem, about our issues, about our prayer requests. Come on now. If you can make that, that subtle change, that, that one little change right there in your approach towards God, just like a tweaking in your thinking, this tweaking in your speaking can change something. I'll tell you what, when you speak something out, it has the power of God on it. The Bible says that the word is powerful and, and, and it will bend your reality to the will of God when you speak things out. I want to I kind of take this a step further because many, many of us do that. I don't know how many of you have uh, different prayers that are all based on scripture and you go to God on the bed, you know, and you say, Dear Father, you know, I bring my husband before you right now and you're reading, right? And you're saying, God, you said, you know, that you would, and, and you pray all these things out, all these different scriptures out over his life. And I don't know how many of you do that. I want to take it a step further. This morning, it's a great thing to do, and I can help you with verses if you ever need a verse about what you're going through. And there's a verse about the word of God is full of what you and I need, promises that you and I need. I want to take it a step further. And I want to say this, that when we speak in prayer to God about his word, that's one thing. It's another thing when we step out a little bit and from that place of prayer, from that relationship that's behind us with God, not to God, but to situations and circumstances, we begin to speak out the word. All right, so not using the Bible and promises in prayer to God, but from a place of prayer. This is a shift that can, this, this can really spark some changes in our life. Where we begin to speak out and declare over people and over situations and circumstances what the will of God is. That's powerful. And you're speaking and you're declaring. You can see this in that. You can look it up later in, in that. Mark chapter 11, you can see this, where, where Jesus talks to the mountain. He says, speak to the mountain. Don't speak to God just about this mountain, but speak to it. Speak to the situations and circumstances. Speak to it. We need to be speaking to God about the weather sometimes. <laughs> I mean, you can speak about all kinds of things, but the power of what you say makes all the difference. Praise God. I want to show you that uh, you know, from the time our kids were all little, and you can start this any time. From the time when our kids were all little, you know, when we tuck them into bed, you know, there's the, the, the silly little games that you play with kids when you're going to bed, you know, and all the different tricks that you do to try to get them to lie down and just kind of go to sleep or whatever. In all that kind of stuff, there's something that, that, um, that Mary and I do from the time when our kids were little. People will say, we'll speak some scriptures over them. Right? So rather than just a prayer, like, hey, Johnny, let's just pray to God. Hey, God, thank you for loving me. You know, that's great, right? But then take it a step further and begin to speak out over them the word of God. Isn't that right? So we'll say our kids' name, you know, so we'll Spencer dwells in the secret place. This is Psalm 91, right? Spencer dwells in the secret place of the Most High. Like he abides under the shadow of the Almighty. He says of the Lord, he is, he is my refuge and my strength. And him alone do I trust to those he trusts. Surely goodness and mercy will follow him all the days of his life. And I'm just sitting there on the chair with him, right? He's like, Daddy, I want another hug. You know, which means let's get out of bed and into the chair, and so we can have this hug, and I use that time to pray for him, right? Dwells in the secret place of the Most High and abides in the shed. Surely goodness and mercy will follow him all the days of his life, and he will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. No wonder his heart sings for joy, and his mouth shouts his praises, and his body rests in safety. For you alone are always with him. For you have shown him the way of life, granting him the joy of his presence and the pleasures of living with you forever and with long life. That's when I tickle him. He satisfies you 
and shows you, shows, shows you his salvation. Isn't that right? He's speaking the words over and 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 over. And you know what? It's speaking those things that are not. Because they will be as though they were. Right? He abides, they are, he does abide under the shadow. But it's many of that, many of those things in that prayer are futuristic. I'm preparing the way for him and for our kids to walk into that way in the future. When all of a sudden they get that awareness that Jesus is meant to be personal. Isn't that right? And so our speaking, our speaking out over our kids, I mean, it's easy to complain about kids, and it's easy to kind of, you know, complain to other people or other parents or to God or whatever. It's, it's easy to say a lot of things about kids that aren't necessarily going to set them up like that, but to put that discipline. You know, that's just in parenting. What about in work, right? What about, what about speaking and declaring when you're on your way to work, right? I'm blessed in the city and I'm blessed in the country. What about that? Or the scripture that says, Father, I thank you that, you that you have promised to bless the work of my hands. I speak today that the work of my hands are blessed. And you're speaking out. There's nobody else in the car except for Jesus. Those angels, the Bible says, are sent to minister to you to line things up for you in your life. That they hearken unto the voice of God, right? That they, they're sent to do his bidding and his word. And there you are, speaking out his word before you even get to work, before your boss even gets there, before your colleagues get there, you're there and you're praying out some things. Because you want to take, you want to speak what is not as though it were. Listen, this can make you and me, it can make us look a little crazy. Mm -hmm. That's right. Because we're speaking with this confidence in things that haven't even existed yet, that don't even, haven't even shown themselves yet. Isn't that right? It can make us, you can feel it when you're speaking it. This is a little different. But I'm telling you what is the key to great change. It's the key to great change in your life and in my life to be able to take the word of God and speak to him on the basis of it and then to speak from that place of prayer the word of God over our situations and over our circumstances. The Bible says that it will affect change, that it never comes back void. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. I want to take a few minutes. Uh, I'm not going to harp on this for very long, but I want to take a few minutes and talk about the third element of change. When you're going before God with this one thing that you want to change in your life, and you're saying 2016 is about this one thing, of all the things that I do, this one thing I want to make sure of. When you're going before God and you want to switch up your prayer life and you're thinking about it differently and you're, you're speaking differently, I want to challenge just for a few minutes this third element. And it's the element of your action. And I want us to dig as deep as we can and, and go to our actions, not your actions at work, and not your actions, you know, with your kids, and not your actions, you know, together with friends, you know, hanging out, or not all those kinds of actions and things you do. But I want to talk for a moment in your, your actions, your, the physicality of your relationship with God. All right? We started out by saying how our thinking about God has to change, and now we're talking about our speaking has to change. I just want to finish this just by saying our actions before God. They need to change. Here's something we've always said. Um, you'll recognize this. We've always said this as a church. We've got people from all kinds of different church backgrounds that act before God all kinds of different ways, all kinds of different expressions of our faith and our worship, and people from all kinds of different backgrounds. So we've always said this as a church, you know, that the only rule, the only standard for what your worship looks like or what your prayer life looks like or for, you know, what you do and you know, when, when somebody from the front says, you know, okay, everybody, let's just sing out a song towards God, you know, what you do, the only standard for that, for any of those things, and even more so for your relationship, your own prayer life with God, we've said this from the beginning, the only standard for all of that is that you are authentic to what God is doing in you. Right? You recognize that, we've always said that. If, if you can be real to what God is asking of you, that's the only standard right there. That focuses me inward. So when I'm standing up here and I'm worshiping and the church is behind me or whatever and I'm just worshiping the Lord, the standard that I'm looking at is what's in my heart between me and God. It's not about whether somebody's dancing off to the side or, you know, somebody's sitting down over here or, like, I'm not comparing. I'm not looking. I'm, it's between me and God. I've always kind of smiled inside in prayer meetings when you can tell that the prayers that are being said sometimes are for the other people in the room as opposed to for God. Isn't that right? But really, it's a connection between you and God. And here's, here's what I exhort and I encourage all of us to do, is to make sure that we are authentic, that we are 
that we are true to what God is doing on the inside of us. That way, nobody can point fingers and judge anybody else and say, well, that's too crazy, or that's too lazy, or that's too, isn't that right? Nobody else can point at anybody else because we're all looking to God and saying, God, what is it that you want me to do? What is the physicality, the action behind my praying? What should it be like? If you and I can be true to that, I think it'll serve the whole church well. It'll serve us well, us personally in our walking before God. But you don't have to walk with God very long to know this. If you're true to that, it's a learning curve. If you're authentic to what God is doing on the inside of you, listen, it's a learning curve. It's a, God loves us enough not to leave us the same. You aware of that? That he stretches and he pulls us. Isn't that right? I remember when I first showed up in uh, you know this kind of style of churches. Uh, you know, I never really clapped my hands in church at all. I grew up, you know, I think I was saved in my mother's womb at some point. I grew up, grew up Baptist. I did have an encounter with God, so I know when I when I got saved. But I just grew up in church and uh, never really never clapped in church at all unless someone did a special number and then it was, you know, way to go. But for Jesus, you know, Jesus wants me to clap. Yeah. Interestingly enough. It's all through the Bible. You know, clapping is all the way through the Bible. And so the, my first encounter into a church where people clap, I was kind of like, why, what? Why is everyone doing this? Like, what's going on here? Like, why would you, why would you clap? And, and someone, someone talked to me about it. I can't remember. Somewhere along the line, somebody talked about it and said, you know what? It's actually a spiritual act. You know, rather than just like, oh, we don't have drums today. Or, you know, like, oh, this drum, drummer's off a little bit. I think I'm going to, like, clap. You know, or you know, it doesn't just make it sound better in the natural, that there's actually a spiritual thing that happens when we're like, the Lord rage. You know, that there's something spiritual that happens when you clap. It's like a, that's why the Bible says it. You know, not just for fun or because God likes us to hit our hands together. But there's something spiritual that happens when we do it. And so, um, you know, I'm like, well, that's great. Have you ever said this to God? That's great for that person then, but don't ask me to do it. You ever said that to God? You know, I used to tell God that about dancing or jumping around in church or anything like that. God, that's fine for people that want to do that, but I don't. <laughs> Danger, look out. I remember the first time that I finally clapped in church. I'd spent the last 10 minutes convincing myself that I was going to do this and that nobody was watching. <laughs> I remember the first time I did it, I asked the crowd. I was in church with uh, Mary's family or whatever. They were doing their own thing. I didn't think they noticed it. We got sat, sat in the car afterwards and kind of sat down ready to go home, and it was like silent in the car. And all of Mary's family, you know, finally one of them, finally one of them said, "We all saw you do it, Rowan." You know? <laughs> they actually had, you know, noticed, you know. <laughs> but there was something, there was a freedom that got sparked on the inside of me when I realized that God wanted the fullness of my praise. You know that it might be fine for you and your learning curve with God to say, "You know what? You can't tell that I'm praising, but I am." You know, I'm praising God on the inside. You know, that might be fine for you where you're at. I'm not saying that, you know, it's a different journey for different people. But I'm saying for me to be authentic to the praise that God wanted to put in me. That when I say, God, I praise you, that, you know, if I'm just kind of saying it, sitting down, I can almost feel his kind of like eyebrow raising. Really? Yeah. God, I'm so thankful. Because you don't have to sleep. <laughs> you, know, you know, some of the things that challenge God challenged me is like, would you treat your spouse that way? Honey, I love you. If anything changes, I will let you know. <laughs> doesn't it require? <laughs> doesn't it require a constant, ongoing, being ahead of the curve to what she would want, actively pursuing her? Like, isn't that what a marriage takes? Am I wrong? Does somebody have a corner on something? No, it requires that, right? Like, a, like I'm on the edge of what I'm comfortable with, but honey, this is for you. Isn't that right? That's what it requires in a love relationship. And God would challenge me with that. And he'd be like, okay, so Rowan, so Rowan, it says all the way through the Bible, raise your hands. Why do you refuse? That's what he would say to me. All the way through the Bible, lift your hands up to the Lord. Why do you refuse? Okay, fine, God, I'll clap and I'll raise my hand, but I won't do that. All the scriptures in the Bible dance before the Lord. Should you bring to the Lord that which costs you nothing? You know, all these like personally challenging, kind of like God is pulling me 
and inviting me into an expression. Let me tell you, every time I've done it to please somebody else, there's no benefit really at all. Every time I've stepped out and, and done something in my actions before God. One time I was just sitting there praying, it was early in the morning, and I felt like God saying, you know, Rowan, I want you to, I want you to stand up, and I just want you to jump in place. I want you to jump on the devil for the things that he's been doing. I wasn't even feeling it necessarily. Whatever, I'm like, really? Now? But my coffee will get cold, you know, like now, you know? Yeah, but God, all by myself? Shouldn't I save that energy for church, you know? No, now, you know? And so there I am in the pre-dawn blackness in my living room with my Bible. And I'm like, please, anytime now, all right? And then he says, you know, as soon as you get serious about it, then you can stop. <laughs> so you and I need to be authentic to the learning curve that's in front of us, to the things that God wants us to do. I never, I used to always used to sit when I prayed, and God, God would kind of pull me out of my seat. And He said, "Well, when you pray, I want you to be active, and I want you to be engaged, and I want you to pray like it was important. I want you to pray." And I felt that style was kind of like walking. That's why you'll see me do this oftentimes, right? I don't have an armchair up here, just kind of like relax a little while, and just kind of like, "Okay, God, you know." Because God wanted, this is for me, that he wanted me to be active and engaged. He wanted me to fall asleep when I was praying. That he wanted me to be on. Almost like I was on a date with him, and he wanted my attention and my energy and my effort, rather than drifting and, you know, whatever it might be. And so for you, because this is just a personal example, but for you, what are the actions that could do so much in changing your relationship with God? There was, a, there was a period in my life when God got me to kneel down when I prayed, and it, it's all the way through the Bible. Here's a, here's a guideline. God, if it's in here, I won't rule it out. If it's in here in this book, it's an option for me. You're going to have to tell me or show me or help me or grace me or guide me, but God, if it's in here, I won't rule it out. That's a pretty good guideline, right? There's one time in my life where I felt like I had to kneel every time I prayed, and my knees would hurt. But God wanted me to kneel for some reason. <laughs> he wanted me to do that. Let me wrap it up with this. There was one time many years ago. Mary was mad at me. Okay, it's just last week, but it's <laughs> just several years ago. <coughs> my wife was upset with me. Well, I felt like I was at me. Have you ever had those kind of moments where you're not sure that somebody's done something? And uh, she was upset with me, and uh, Mary and I keep pretty short accounts. Like, we'll talk it out the same day, or we'll fix things. But for whatever reason, I don't know what it was, and I still don't know, the, the distance between us just kind of like hung in the air, like a, like a bad smell. You know, like it was just always kind of there. You know, we were kind of like avoiding each other almost. We were like, so we, you know, we were three days into this kind of like really abnormal pattern for us, and I was just kind of, what is, what is going on? You know, it almost like everything I said would, would come out wrong, and vice versa. And it was just like this distance between, between the two of us. She's been married, married for more than five minutes. You know what I'm talking about, right? It's just like distance. <clears throat> Finally, after three days, I almost bumped into her in the hallway. <laughs> but instead of like, oh, sorry, you know, the stroke of genius hit me. I thought, I'm going to hug her. So I said, hey, and I put my arms around her. And within like a second or two, she kind of like melted into my grace. Because you can tell when my hug's not working. <laughs> right? And we just kind of held each other there in the hallway for, I don't know, a minute or two, a few minutes. I mean, that's a long hug in a run of the mill day, right? Just like, we were there. And I could tell that she was kind of like sobbing a little bit, and she pulled away, or whatever, and she said, that's all I needed. <laughs> so instead of saying, what? <laughs> you know, I said, well, let's do it again. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it was a big eye opener for me, because all my figuring out, and all my thinking, and all my who's at fault, and what's going to change, and what's going on here, and all my analyzing of who might be in fault and who's not at fault, and all that angst, and all that distance, and all that, and all she needed that whole time was this one key, this one embrace that would show her something from my heart, or his heart, to her heart that 
changed everything. Like, it's never been like that again. Like, like what was that? I still don't know. I still can't explain it. But I want to say this. That the keys of what you speak and declare before God. And the keys of you deciding, you know what? God's been working on me to step out and do this or do that when it comes to my actions and my praying and in my worshiping. Those one, that one thing that you do, that you change, that you decide, I'm going to shift this for God, can change everything. It can be all you need. And all the pain and all the angst and all the distance and all the frustration, it can melt away. Because he knows the key for you. And I'm praying that he's speaking that to you this morning. Amen. Why don't you all stand up with me and let's go before God and pray. God, we're asking you for that this morning. We're asking you for it. Go ahead and just kind of put yourself aside. And go ahead and close your eyes. Lock yourself in with God. Those of you that we released this morning can ask the Lord, does he really want me to stay? <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Go ahead. Give an audience with God right there. You know, sometimes it's kind of at the time at the end of the service like this, when it's all kind of coming together, why you're here and what God wants to say. This can be sometimes the most powerful part. So let's just take a minute or two here, and I want you to go before God. Do it in your imagination or with your heart. The Bible says that you have access towards the Father. That you can walk right up to where he is, right into the courtroom of heaven. And so, Father, we approach you this morning. We come before you. And God, in addition to the one thing that you're speaking to us, that 2016 is about, that you want to see change. In addition to that, Father, I pray that you would speak to us right now about the things that we're saying, the things that we're speaking. Or maybe for most of us, the things that we're not speaking. That we could. That you, you said something before us here that if we would adopt your word and speak it like we believe it, in the face of things that aren't that way, aren't happening, that God, actual reality would bend towards the will of God. God, I pray that we would be quickened and awakened. that defined from God, you know, in your heart, you, you just kind of know what that thing is that you want to see change. There is Bible that you can speak over that, that you can declare and speak over it, that will change it like nothing else. And that can be like the embrace and the hallway, that hug that changes everything that you didn't realize that's what you had to do. But that was the key, and it began to shift and change, and all you did was stand there morning after morning and speak the word of God over that situation. Different ones of us in our actions towards you. God, I pray when we're praying, when we're worshiping you, God, when we're together as a church, when we're in our small group environments, when we're by ourselves before you, when we're leading our family spiritually, when we're praying with our family, Father, I pray that you would help us to lead in and to be really there and to be saying, God, what do you want me to do? God, what's next for me? Father, that you would help us not to hide in church or sitting on the couch spending our time with you, but we wouldn't hide behind the way that we've always been or the things that we've just kind of grown accustomed to. But Spirit of God, I pray that you would pull the covers off of that, that God, you would wake us up inside. And God, let those things, let those very actions, let that singing and speaking, let that hand raising, let that kneeling, let, let whatever you lead us to, God, let it be the key, let it be the catalyst, let it be the thing that, 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 that catalyzes great change in our lives. God, we've seen it time and time again, how 
as you use those little things, the way we think, the way we speak, the way we act, to change things beyond our ability to change. With your praise, it takes us every step of the way. God, we've seen it again and again. God, I pray for that grace here and now. Here and now. God, let it fall down upon us. You want to receive that this morning? Hold out your hands before the Lord or lift them up. Turn your heart, turn your face towards God. Let it fall, let it fall down upon you. I believe in God right now for a grace, a supernatural grace to rest down upon you for the changes you got to make, the conversations you got to have, the shifts down on the inside of your thinking and your heart that need to move. Right now, right now, the grace of the Father, the grace of the Father, let it fall. Let it fall. Let it fall. Let it fall. Thank you, Father. We receive it this morning. We receive it. We receive it, Lord God. Let it fall. Let it fall. Fire of God. The grace of God fall. The grace of God fall. The grace of God fall. Let it fall on you. Let it fall on you. God, let it melt. Our resistance to you. Right now by the Spirit. I sense him doing that right now. Let it melt. He wants to melt the resistance that's in your heart to him. The fear and the holding back. Come, Spirit of God. Just take the minutes. I feel him doing that right now when you're standing before him. Come by your grace, God. You know all the best preaching in the world. Can't melt that resistance away. But Jesus, by his grace, right now, right now, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Speak to the Spirit of God. Let's share. I feel the Holy Spirit in this morning. I feel it. Oh, how I love your spirit. I sense his presence. You sense him? He's so full of joy. So full of peace. Take a drink right now. Breathe it in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just go ahead and proceed. Just gonna take another minute. Go ahead and receive.
every other area of your life, you get that right there, that's all you need. Your connection with him. His spirit, your spirit. This morning has been very patient. It's been a good time together, hasn't it? If you need prayer for anything this morning, please feel free just to come, come on out right here. When we dismiss, and we'll be happy to come get around with you and get around you and pray for you for anything that you need. If you need prayer for anything, feel free to come on up. Other than that, I love you all. Be blessed. Have a wonderful rest of your day.